Welcome to another Callisto Protocol video. To start, I wanted to include this trophy pop here for Glutton for Punishment, which is for completing the game on Contagion Mode. Now, I didn't really plan on making this video, so my microphone controller was not muted, so I apologize for the background noise, but it's only for this combat encounter. I should probably turn on the setting that is always muted, unless I turn it on, but then I'll forget to unmute, and when I use my actual microphone, it will be muted, and there's been multiple times when I've done that when it's been muted and I have not realized it and I've recorded an entire episode of a game and my microphone was muted. So I don't know, we'll see, maybe I'll try it, we'll see how it works out. But either way, I apologize for the background noise. So I just put out a video on this exact encounter for Hardcore and it's essentially exactly the same, so I don't necessarily need to go over it again, but I will briefly go over it as I think it's some good tips. So once you start this encounter, you're going to run, want to run to the back of the platform first, and you're just going to basically use your heavy melee attack and just knock these enemies all off the back of the platform. Just be careful because Jacob likes to lunge forward when he does it, and if you fall off the platform, you're going to be dead. So that one guy always spawns out further, so you have to hit him twice. Now, I still don't know if it's random where they spawn or if it depends on your location on the platform. But either way, just try to like hang towards the back and one of the sides to see if they'll spawn on the sides. But in this case, they spawned in the front. So I just used the grip and just threw them all off the front. I had plenty of grip at this point in the game, and I, um, I think I had a couple batteries too, so I didn't really need to worry about using up my grip early. But if you are worried about that, I would try to grip at least two of the enemies on each side and then try and knock the other two off. Um, it's a little hard to knock them off the front. It is possible to do, it's just you gotta get them in the right spot. And I explained a little bit more of that in the other video, but these sides are much easier because up there in that front corner, you can knock them off pretty easy where there's no railing. So just keep that in mind there. Um, but I was really stressed during this encounter, and when I started this encounter, I took like a deep breath, and I was like, all right, I know this encounter. I can do this encounter, no problem. I can fight two head, no problem. You know, I'm not, I'm not really worried about it, but just this chapter is a really slow and long chapter because it's a lot of stealth, and it's a lot of crouch walking and stabbing the enemies in the back because they're blind, so they can't see you. But if you do alert them, then they all swarm you, and it just gets crazy. And that's the last thing you want in Contagion because you do not want to die because you restart the chapter. Now coming up here on the two head fight, um, you basically just have to wait for him to spawn. I don't really know why it sometimes seems like it takes forever for him to spawn. I don't know if it's... It always seems like whenever you clear the enemies really fast on this platform it takes two head a while to spawn. I'm not really sure why but it, it just seems to be that way. Now I prefer to use the riot shotgun on two head because I think it just does the most damage and when you have it almost fully upgraded uh, without having the very top upgrade which is the explosive rounds uh, it just the eight you basically shoot all eight of the bullets into two head and he will drop down to his knees and then you can smack him three times he will rip off the one side and then you just basically load him up with another eight bullets and he's dead so i mean your mileage may vary here depending on where you hit him if you're not hitting all headshots it may take more bullets if you are hitting all headshots it may take less bullets you know it's really just all about where you hit him but your goal here is to hit him as many times as possible without getting hit yourself and wait for him to drop to his knees and then when he drops to his knees definitely take advantage of that run up to him and just do your regular melee attack three combo one two three that when he does that he will rip off his other half and then you basically just have to shoot him till he goes down and uh i was really really hyped when i did this because i did it completely flawlessly you can see my health is still full I did not take any hits at all. Well, it's full. I didn't come in here as full health, but I haven't taken a single hit this entire encounter. So I was super excited about it. And you can hear me through the controller microphone. Let's fucking go, baby. 
So this video really is just going to contain all of the two head fights in the final boss fight. It's just kind of what I decided to do for the video clips in it. But really what I wanted to talk about during this video is the differences between hardcore and contagion modes and just some other tips that could be helpful for you. Hardcore is definitely in my opinion the harder of the two difficulty modes, barring the per chapter permadeath of contagion. Um, hardcore is extremely harsh when it comes to drops from enemies and other loot around the environment. The game barely gives you any ammo or credits so you basically have to explore every area and know where the special credit items are that you can sell in the reforge. The enemies are also noticeably tanky and take a lot of hits from the baton, even one that's fully upgraded on the melee damage side. Once you get to the part of the game with the tentacles, then pretty much every single enemy will mutate once you damage them, which makes them even more tanky. If you don't kill them fast enough and they do mutate, you will seriously sit there and just constantly be comboing them with your melee attack over and over and over and over until they finally die. It's insane how much damage they take. And I mean, obviously they do a lot of damage as well, but really it's, I don't know, when you get hit in this game, it's usually just because you uh, either dodge the wrong way or just something stupid. You got stuck on something and um, you didn't dodge right. Or another thing that still often happens is if you're in an encounter with multiple enemies, one of the enemies will still give you a cheap shot from behind that you just can't dodge. It's really kind of frustrating. So hardcore is definitely the harder of the two. Contagion is way more lenient on drops and enemies even drop the special credit items pretty frequently. Credits are also very abundant and it doesn't seem like that was even changed from the normal difficulty modes. Ammo is also never really a problem. I always had tons of ammo. I did usually always buy extra ammo before two head fights just so I could make sure I had enough shotgun ammo, but it really wasn't necessary as I almost always had plenty and I usually save my shotgun ammo for the boss fights and I just use my hand cannon for everything else. Um, now, speaking about guns, I've said this in other videos, and I still stand by it. I mean, this even goes back to, like, when this game released, and I made my first ever combat weapon tips video. Uh, the hand cannon and the ride shotgun are the only guns you should really even consider using, especially in these two uh, modes, Hardcore and Contagion. Uh, they're given to you for free. Now I know the game makes you spend 800 credits for the hand cannon, but it gives you those 800 credits from a chest right beside the first reforge in the game, so in my opinion it's still free. Uh, now that's not to say the other guns aren't good, but I personally think the hand cannon and the riot shotgun are just completely unmatched when it comes to their usefulness, their alt fires are great, although you're not really going to use their alt fires in uh, these two game modes just because you're not going to want to use the extra bullets um, and just the fact that they're basically free like you don't have to pay for them they're given to you already so say you do print another weapon the game is still going to drop you hand cannon and riot shotgun ammo on top of the other ammo and in game modes that already reduce the amount of drops you get why would you want to add more possibility of other items into that mix like it just seems silly to me so stick with those two guns and don't use any of the other ones now if you're just going to play the normal game modes like uh, minimum medium or maximum security absolutely use the other guns for sure they're all great i have a video on all those guns too all of them maxed out all of their alt fires how they all fare against two head etc the baton is super important to at least aim for the block break upgrade as soon as possible. It will greatly reduce the enemy's combos they try on you and will pretty much reduce them to a one swing attack. Once you have block break, basically make sure you have the bottom three, the middle three, and then if you can afford it and there is no other beneficial upgrade that you could get, like a grip upgrade, then get the third damage upgrade. Grip upgrades are also super important. I would go for the energy upgrades first so that you can use it more before using a battery and velocity upgrades as launching enemies further to spikes or other environmental hazards is extremely useful and it saved me countless times 
uh, is a good way to help clear out rooms. You can kind of um, reduce the amount of enemies in the room that are trying to attack you all at once, throw a couple of them to fan blades or gears or whatever is around you. There's usually always spikes. Something is around you you can throw an enemy into and take them out of the equation. It's doubtful in these game modes that you would be able to get to the max velocity upgrade, but if you can afford it and there's nothing else you could spend it on, then it's very worth getting as launching an enemy into a wall can instantly kill it. Recharge speed is obviously useful, but I found that it's just better to hope for batteries when you're using the grip, because even at max recharge speed, it's really not that fast. Now, it's not being said to not upgrade it, you should absolutely upgrade it. I would still aim for the bottom three, the middle three, and then if you have anything left over, you choose where to put them in the top three. Um, but again, that also goes to, to make sure make sure you have your, your two guns upgraded to the max other than all fire moves, which would include the boom bullets and the explosive rounds for the hand cannon and the shotgun. Just don't worry about those, you're not gonna use them, so upgrade everything else in their trees. Um, uh, you wanna make sure you have the melee upgrades, like I said earlier, and then your grip upgrades. Other than that, if you have all of that and you still have credits to spend, and you can afford one of the more expensive upgrades, I would either go for the melee or the grip, I would not go for one of the alt fires in the guns. It's just not worth it in this game mode. Unless you're in New Game Plus, Sure, go for it, because if you have nothing else to spend it on, you might as well spend it on that. So I already kind of said this, but gun upgrades on Hardcore and Contagion are not worth going for the alt fires. They're too expensive, and in Hardcore you barely have ammo anyway, so alt fires are just not cost effective. With that being said, upgrade everything else for your maximum of two guns, and I cannot stress this enough, you really shouldn't use anything other than the hand cannon and the riot shotgun in these difficulty modes. Drops are already scarce and hardcore, so why would you want to add more ammo types into the mix? Now, I'm sure I'll get some comments about this, but I think it's useful information, and I'll be the first to tell you that I did it myself. On PS5, you can turn off your autosync for cloud saves, and once you complete a chapter and you see the autosave logo on the bottom right of the screen, you want to quit the game, manually upload your save to the cloud, and get back into the game and continue on. If you die, the game will autosave immediately and restart you back at the beginning of the chapter. This will void the trophy for completing Contagion Mode without dying. So if you die, you can quit the game and just download your cloud save. This is the save without the death tag, so when you get to the end of the game, you'll still pop the trophy. I had to download my save on the Aftermath chapter, because for some reason I struggled with the end of that chapter. Uh, I realized that it's not worth trying to kill the security robots in Contagion because the chances of you having ammo to shoot them and kill them and the chance of you actually being successful is pretty low because they're just hard to kill to be honest so I wouldn't even do it I would just sneak past them other than that though I didn't have any other issues until the tower chapter I had to replay tower at least six times because I died on Captain Ferris a bunch of times and one time the game actually crashed on me which I've never really experienced crashes in this game, so it was super weird. But it was right after the two-head fight when I went to remove the gate views, and that counted as a death. So I had to re-download my save and restart the chapter again, which granted that two-head fight's at the beginning of the chapter, so it wasn't a big deal. If you don't want to go this route, that's okay, and I wish you luck. I could probably do it without dying, but I don't care to get that good at the game, and also it's just not that deep. I just wanted the trophy, so it was back at 100% trophies. I can most likely do it without dying in New Game Plus though, as after completing the game with Contagion, you can do a New Game Plus run with Contagion. So in conclusion, Contagion's main draw is supposed to be the Pro Chapter Permanent, as it's really not that difficult otherwise. Hardcore is really the hardest difficulty with its limited ammo drops and especially the limited credits. You'll basically just be on edge during these fights in Contagion because one hit will kill you, and just knowing you have to replay the whole chapter is just really daunting. The You Belong Here trophy for completing Contagion Mode without dying is probably one of the... I guess I could say harder trophies I've gotten, even though technically I cheated, as some would say, to get it. But I don't really care, and you shouldn't either, because it's just a video game at the end of the day. And we play video games to have fun, not to get stressed out. So if you enjoyed, leave a like, 
and subscribe if you want to. Have a good one.